it was never a question of when I found music. It was just always there. I was always singing at family parties and spending hours in my bedroom with a karaoke machine and a tape recorder. And I'd be making up my own radio shows, playing host, singer, and weather person. It wasn't until I was 14 and completely obsessed with Avril Lavigne that I wanted to learn the guitar at all. So that Christmas, my dad brought me one. And I went on to spend even more time in my bedroom, trying really hard to write the next skater boy. I wanted to look like her, sound like her, and have as many fans as her. And I got to work because just the year later I had enough songs to play my first ever gig. I was 15 years old, opening up for a line dancing night here in Leicester. I then went on to find open mic nights that would let underage people in. And then those open mic nights turned into more real gigs, so I decided to record my music for the very first time and let the world discover me on MySpace. Suddenly, I was dragging around a suitcase of burnt CDs at the age of 21, heading out on UK tours. I was doing everything right. I was doing everything that everybody else was doing, but I was nowhere near the same level of success that Avril Lavigne was at 21. So I started to doubt myself. Started thinking of all the ways that I could be better. Emailing more venues, networking more, making better impressions, all of which were completely within my control. But there was one thing I came to learn. One thing I couldn't control, I couldn't, con couldn't change, and I still can't today. I am a woman. Because being a woman in this music industry was the one thing I wasn't told to be prepared for. I wasn't prepared to be undermined, manipulated, lied to, and the list goes on. There was no one, there was no guidebook, no handbook, nobody to tell me the advice that I so painfully needed to hear. How to survive the music industry as a woman. And that's what I want to give to you because I don't want other women and younger women to ever feel like they're alone in this because they're really, really not. So my first piece of advice is stop competing with other women. There is a very distinct lack of female representation within the music industry. Wherever you go, you will find a man making the decision of how, when and where a woman should appear. This was made very clear to me in my early days of touring. There was one year I played over 150 gigs and I can count how many women I played alongside on one hand. And I didn't notice this problem straight away, but when there was another woman in the room, something strange would happen. There was an air of hostility. There was a distaste towards one another. Raise your hands if in here you have ever judged another woman. And have you ever felt threatened by another woman from just being in the same room? We have been conditioned to act this way. This behaviour is the result of something known as the Smurfette Principle, coined by Katha Pollitt back in 1991. She explains, men are the norm and women are the exception. There are not enough women performing the various roles that exist within music. So when faced with each other, we can become territorial, as if that other woman is going to take away something that we've fought for. We have unconsciously contributed to the gender imbalance within the music industry for decades by keeping each other at arm's length. This is why all female-led festivals record labels, club nights, radio shows, have never been more important to women in music. If you don't know these circles, make yourself known and build your allies because we have such a long way to go until the music industry is equally <coughs> represented. We can no longer miss out on the power of unity because the people in power are making us compare our talents and not celebrate them. My second piece of advice is Stop being likeable. 
When you first come into the music industry, you are going to be told that you're going to have to pay your dues and earn your worth, especially if you're a woman. And more often than not, we're not speaking up because paying your dues can actually mean don't cause a problem. Because of this, I've let predatory comments slide. I've laughed off sexist jokes. I've lied about my sexuality. I've let people in power make decisions I didn't agree with because I was too scared of speaking up. And when I look back, I, I realized I lived this way for a really, really long time. It was around my 25th birthday and I realized that something wasn't quite right with me. I was acting out in strange ways, being really defensive. And I was actually forgetting my lyrics on stage for the first time in my whole life. And sim someone very simply just asked me, are you okay? And I bursted into tears because I was crumbling under the pressure of constantly pleasing someone, constantly keeping up a likable appearance. It took a hell of a lot of time and courage to introduce the word no into my vocabulary. And when I did, well, not everybody liked that either because then I was naive, I was young, I was hormonal, I was a diva. I had a lot to learn. And they were right about that one thing, I did have a lot to learn. I had to learn that by not speaking up, you plummet yourself into isolation. And by never causing a problem, all you really do is cause a problem for yourself. You cannot fear controversy because great things are not made, taught or discovered without it. My third piece of advice is build your community. Somebody once told me, build your community, Charlotte. And back when I was 21 or 22, I was far too obsessed with my own success to think there would be a benefit of having like-minded people around me. I, I snubbed it off. I figured that building my own career was hard enough without having to build something else alongside it. It took me until the age of 27, feeling lost and defeated, to realise I'd been playing it safe. I was sending all of the right emails, having the meetings, paying for PR, radio, considering managers, but something still wasn't working. Things felt slow, as if I had been repeating the same formula over and over again. Something had to change. Because I own every single one of my songs, which means I can do anything with them. So why was I playing it so safe? It's so easy to fall into the trap of what the music industry is telling you to do. Because you're looking up to your heroes and peers, thinking the whole time, that's how I should be doing it. But that's not it. So around the same time I was on a beach in Lisbon thinking, well, what's next then? So I sipped my beer and I said out loud, I'm going to start a record label because I want a community of artists that have the say. I want to stop listening to the noise of the music industry and create our own industry. I want to give justice to the songs that we own, promote our own shows and stop spending thousands of pounds on companies to sell our music because together we have that knowledge. And this is why my last piece of advice is so crucial to act on. Because as soon as I did create my own community, I had completely eradicated competition, isolation. I had erased my biggest setback, not speaking up. I went from girl with a guitar to a woman with a business and the change in my life was so sudden I was mixed with feelings of pride and frustration that I just hadn't done it sooner. And if I could go back and tell my younger self everything that I now know, I'd like to think that she would do it anyway. But maybe she would be closer to the success that she would dreamt of. And this is why conversation between women and music has never been more important. We have to accept that there is a certain level of social responsibility that we do have for each other. And the sooner we recognize that, the sooner the music industry can change. 
It's a chain reaction. The more we give away our best kept secrets, the more conversation there is. The more conversation there is, the better ideas we're creating and the more fearless we become. It's not about surviving the music industry anymore. We are running our own. I want to share with you a line from my favourite film called Joy. And for those who don't know Joy, it's a film about a woman who had one idea. She persisted and created an entire empire. The line goes, the world doesn't owe you a thing. So speak up, do not fear controversy and create your own story. Thank you.